All right, Alexander, we had a summit, a virtual summit. Of course, these are becoming commonplace now. And to be quite honest, it's kind of ridiculous. They, they You know, maybe like five years ago, people would just say, OK, uh, the president of the United States had a phone call with the with the leader of China. And that would be that. But now they're, you know, doing the whole video thing. And these are, you know, virtual summits, virtual summits. Yeah, I, I'm calling BS unless you're sitting face to face with the person and you're actually, you and your team are actually talking to them face to face and you're discussing issues. It's not a summit. But anyway, you have a virtual summit. Needless to say, as with everything in and around the Biden administration, it was bizarre and weird and creepy. And, um, you know, China's kind of kind of got dragged into Biden's creepy, bizarre, creepy, bizarro world. Um, look, they discussed Taiwan. They discussed uh, Uyghurs. They discussed, uh, you know, uh, business and trade, but nothing of substance as these virtual summits really don't deliver anything of substance anyway, if you want my opinion. But um, what do you make of this, uh, this virtual summit between the United States and uh, China? Well, first of all, I don't think it was a summit meeting. I don't think they discussed anything. I mean, what it was was two people, you know, on on the screen, and one sets out what Skype they're going off. to say in advance. Skype exactly, and the other then, you know, I, I mean, you could you could see that they were working entirely from scripts. The most interesting moment by far came at the beginning when Xi Jinping called Biden his old friend. Now, this has been interpreted in all kinds of ways. But to me, I have to say this, it came across as frankly godfatherish. You know, hello, my old friend. Good to see you there. Uh, you know, I've got, I've got here just next to me all the records of all our meetings and all the things that you said. And see, I know, all see, kind, I mean, it, it, I mean that, 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 <laughs> was, that was how it came across to me, I have to say. I know others will, will argue otherwise, but bear in mind that uh, um, in other discussions, Biden has gone out of his way to sort of distance himself from any story that he is, in fact, C's friend. So, I mean, it was quite, I thought that was quite interesting and very, very revealing and told us an awful lot. But in all other respects, what it was was, you know, an awful lot of uh, sugary words from each side. Uh, but on the substance, there wasn't any movement whatsoever. No meeting of minds, no real discussions. There couldn't be any discussions. I mean, by as you absolutely rightly said, the nature of a summit meeting is you have two leaders. They meet in a room. Sometimes they have their officials. Sometimes they only have translators. They talk. They discuss, they go out into the garden and talk when there are no microphones, hopefully around listening into what they're saying. They come back, they, they try to understand each other's minds and they move towards some kind of an agreement or understanding with each other. Well, that was absolutely not what this was. As I said, this was just each side setting out their positions. And it was done in a way that creates the appearance of action. It creates the appearance of a president having a dialogue with his counterpart in China, with the Chinese very pointedly reminding the US throughout the summit that the China considers itself now to be the US's equal, which is again, you know, not what they wanted, but you know, that's but anyway, that's that's the message that the Chinese wanted to convey. But as I said, it's, it's intended to convey the impression of a president who's actually running things, who's conducting negotiations, who's involved in discussions. But in reality, as I said, it was all, it was all theatre. It was one of the most, it was, it was a television show. <laughs> it, was a, it was a television summit, basically. I mean, you know, two sides, all on screens, and um, we, we have large parts of it shown for the world to see. Chinese in particular have been doing all of that. And as I said, no real substance behind it at all. If you unpack the things that the two leaders said, it's clear that, that they were talking from summits, from, from uh, scripts, and there was no departure from any of the existing positions. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what, what the hell came out of this phone call, the Skype call, the Zoom call. Nothing. Mm, nothing. I mean, uh, I'm reading through every article, all the transcripts. Nothing came out of this. No, no. It was no. just optics, as as is everything 
yes. with the Biden administration yeah. optics. And it seems to me, I think you're right. When he said old friends, it seems to me like the Chinese were just kind of, I don't want to say trolling, but playing along and just saying, you know what, let's amuse the old man. Let's humor him. Yeah. You know, old friend. Let's humor yeah. the old friend. And, and just, you know, play along with the, the these optics yeah. because that's what it was. Pure I optics. Know, I- I, I think they were doing that to some extent. But as I said, it was also, I think, a pointed reminder that, you know, they've had very extensive dealings with Biden. And it was, it, I thought there was a slight edge of threat to it. Dare I say it? I mean, I, I don't want to go into too much of this. But as I said, it, it was basically a way for the Chinese to communicate that, they, you know, they know, an awful, they know Biden very well and they know everything about him. Because he's their old friend, so I mean that that's that's why I said at the start of this program that it had a sort of rather godfatherish feel to me. Um, I I wouldn't, I mean I anyway that that was my my. Well, take we've done many, yeah. We, yeah. we we we've covered the the whole CFC energy uh, Hunter Biden thing. We've covered it in depth, and uh, we've done many videos on it. And about, I think that's about, why many. Uh, about which C is exceptionally well briefed, by the way. I yeah, mean, I mean, they actually nabbed yeah. the guy. I think the guy that was a general, I forgot General, yeah. you or General, I forgot whatever the general's is, name. Yes. Yeah, whatever yeah. his name was, the guy that was running this whole front, yeah. uh, dealing with Hunter and and dealing with buying up companies in the Czech Republic and, and this whole front operation. Um, I mean, they, they got the guy. I mean, yeah. he, he disappeared. Who knows where, where he is? So I, they've got it. They've got everything. and uh... Absol- uh, uh, Absolutely. And as I said, Xi Jinping is known to be somebody who is extremely well briefed before he does, any, he, before he takes a step. I mean, he's, he's that kind of a, a man. It's, dare I say, it, that kind of a system also. So, you know, he never wings it. So he knows exactly all about that, everything. He knows far more than we do, for example. Probably knows more than Biden himself does by now. But anyway, but 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 but, the, that, yeah, but, but anyway, I, I I found that a very suggestive thing, actually. Yeah, that's why that's why we can report that. That's why you can say that, and uh, you know, CNN or MSNBC cannot make that uh, assumption because they can't say that it was kind of very Godfather esque what she told Biden. Because if they said that, then they would have to you know go down the entire path of. Hunter Biden and CFC and everything else that we've reported on, but they chose to completely ignore. So they just can't do it. They just have to come up with the narrative that, oh, you see, they're old friends. <laughs> there you That's go. Right. That's right. Exactly. 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 So, but as I said, on 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 the on the substance, it made it changed nothing. And on the overriding issue, the the really burning topic for the Chinese, which is Taiwan. I mean. Uh, um, Xi Jinping and you know I read the Chinese readout he didn't give an inch I mean he was he was absolutely implacable about this and uh, restated China's position in the most forceful way and made it through it all back to the Americans again so um, you know we'll see we'll see what comes from this but I predict that the problems in the relationship between the US and China will simply will, will simply continue and will get worse, and will intensify. And I don't think it's going to change Chinese policy. I don't think the Chinese have any intention of changing their policy. I think it'll harden them, if anything. What we might see is some movement on the trade issues, where I I really want to say this, the Chinese, who are deeply pragmatic people, understand and have long understood that those free and easy days, you know, the... George W. Bush, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama years when, uh, uh, and Clinton years, of course, when China could export whatever it wanted to the U.S., buy whatever U.S. assets it wanted, get all the factories relocated to China. That that period is over. The one effect of Donald Trump's time is that he called he called an end to that, and though we are seeing a certain amount of backsliding got quite a lot of backsliding from the current administration. I think that overall the Chinese don't expect that they'll be going back to that. And they don't really, I mean, they're, they're making their plans on the assumption that the U.S. will, you know, defend its trade positions um, in future. So because the Chinese recognize this and because they're pragmatic people, 
on that, I think we could actually see some kind of deal being done. But that's been done by the commercial and economic departments of the US government. They're the people who are negotiating this. The president himself has no role in this at all. Yeah. And from a geopolitical uh, standpoint, the Chinese have all the, the leverage over Biden, over the Biden man and the Biden family. So why should they give an inch? Well, indeed. Well, There's no reason all, they have the leverage. Uh, they have the goods. After all, he's their old friend. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, why, why, why should they be concerned about having any problems with their old friend? Yeah, I agree. All right. We'll leave it there, the Duran.locals.com, and go to the Duran shop, 10% off, use the code Real News. You'll find that link down below, and look for our videos on Super U, Rumble, BitChute, and on Odyssey as well. You'll find those links in the description box down below. Take care.